Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome into round number seven of the Ride365.com Nationals, powered by VersusPC.com. My name is Kellen Brower. I'll be joined momentarily by Chris Riesenberg. And we got the 250 Consolation Race on the track right now. These guys are going to go four laps, and the top uh, four will qualify into the motos to join the Fast 36 qualifiers we already have. And we're going to jump into this action right away because out there... And leading this thing, interestingly enough, is your defending champion, Jared Seidhoff, as he's going for a little turnabout and a loop-de-loop. Seidhoff, um, interestingly enough, I was just notified by Riesenberg before this event got underway tonight, was actually planning on racing the 450 class this week, um, and then jumped back down to the 250 class last minute, from my understanding. So, seems like his mindset is pretty much out of championship mode, as he uh, almost can't win it anymore. Um, as he's fallen way back in the points in these past few weeks with some bad results. But he's back out here giving it a chance, and he is in the top four of the qualifiers right now. We got Kevin Gonzalez leading, Chris Channing in third, and Thomas Stillick in fourth. So we got a good group of guys that uh, are all pretty fast and capable running up in the front four with uh, none other than Donut MX. Mr. Brett Powers running in the five spot. He's going to try to get into that final transfer spot. And he's probably got a good 80 to 100 different people watching him on his own personal live stream. And a good YouTube guy as well. So we'll track his progress and see if he can't make it past these guys. As Silic is trying to go after Channing, who's ripping up a 125 tonight. What's up, guys? We got a good group of chat hanging out here tonight as well. We got Kreba as always. Uh, Chris is Lord one Trev Burns 299 all hanging out in chat early on good to see you guys Hope you guys are sitting back and ready for a good stream as Brett Powers is actually gonna go into that final transfer spot We have lost Kevin Gonzalez from the race lead So he's gonna get back up going right in this major battle between Robson Charles Gable Ben Toy on the 180 is in the mix See if he can't get himself Situated with these guys and maybe make a charge forward to get back up to Brett Powers who's holding down that last transfer spot right now Oh Silic little mistake He's trying to run down Channing meanwhile Seidhoff is sprinting away at the front Pretty much as expected when you see a defending champion end up in a consolation race is He's gonna do pretty well What's up, Bud Streamer and Howard Productions 20? Good to see you guys hanging out in chat. Of course, any of you guys watching back on YouTube right now, um, perhaps a day later or maybe a year later, if this is way in the future, you can always watch our streams on twitch.tv forward slash startyoursystemstv. Um, usually a link to that is in the description below in the video as well, so you can follow us up on there. Don't miss a single bit of this live action that we have and also any other... Um, extraneous live streams that we have beyond our Ride365.com Nationals or Moto Option Supercross live streams. But as for right now, we are just getting underway tonight. It is 11 past the hour, and we're probably three hours from even being done here tonight. So we're going to have some great action. 250 Motos coming up in just a moment, and obviously talking about Seidhoff and his recent struggles that did actually hand... Colton Mitchell on the number 10 machine, his teammate on the Prime Designs Graphics Honda, the points lead last week going into Redbud, and Mitchell promptly followed it up with a dominating performance going 1-1 at Redbud to extend that points lead. And looks like he is pretty much the man that's going to start running away with this championship. If Seidhoff can't kind of reel himself back together, other championship hopefuls um, like Walter Gebhardt and uh, a few others have had issues these past few weeks. Red Powers is up into the number 2 spot. So Burt Powers, as sometimes he's oftenly referred as, is making good strides. He's got Silic breathing down his neck and now making that pass back into second. But Powers looks awful comfortable and in a good spot to transfer through here. Just a little mistake there, but able to corral his machine underneath of him. He's got to watch out for the 40 machine sneaking up behind him. Silic already getting away from these guys a bit. Yeah, dirt bikes! Moto Agogo, the one and only, joining us in the chat as well. 
loving to see a vibrant chat early, early on. We got Sim Schmidt. We got Alex Carlo saying that he's bummed he's going to miss his favorite national of the year. That is a bummer. Carlo, one of our somewhat regulars in Race Factor Gaming competition. Haven't seen too much of him in the outdoors, but had a uh, pretty good Supercross season. As your leader was down, Sidehoff just getting up there on the one machine. And Silic looks like he has gone around the outside to take the race lead in this consolation race. They have about a lap and a half left to go. So Sidehoff is going to try to remount and attack for the race lead here. I am doing fantabulous, Moto Gogo. I hope you're doing great as well. Oh, Sidehoff is down again. Gets all out of shape and goes down. There goes Donut MX, Brett Powers himself, and Chris Channing through. So Sidehoff gets up in the four spot. And here comes Kevin Gonzalez, who actually did recover very nicely from that early fall. Uh, crashed on the second lap of the race, but is already back up battling for a transfer spot. And now we're looking at the, po the possible scenario of your defending champion, Jared Sidehoff not even making it into the motos tonight. If Kevin Gonzalez on the 182 BellRoadRV.com machine might be able to get through and make the pass to get himself into the motos here. He's certainly going to send it like a text message. Oh, man, sending it for sure into the sand rollers down here in these deep corners. Southwick always provides us with a fantastic week of racing. These guys wicked out on the wick. Send it like a text message, Kellen. Really? <laughs> All right, that's my call that I need. Yeah, to join the you definitely need to join as Chris Riesenberg joins us here. And uh, yeah, you got to take over for the punts for me. I'm not the best at them. Well, we'll see. I'm gonna try to bring my A game because I've been slacking on the puns. So those of you that hate my puns probably don't want to even watch tonight. Turn it off now. Sorry, Kellen. Sorry, SYS viewers. I'm going to wreck the stream with way more puns than will ever be funny tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it'll be awesome. I think a majority of the people will at least enjoy the puns, if not to get a small laugh out of it, as Sidov is able to get back around Silic into third. So now Silic on the bubble as Powers is right in front of Sidhoff. And Channing on the 125 is leading this thing as Sidehoff throws it down the inside of Powers. Oh, Thomas Silic just went down. Oh, no. So Gonzalez there goes, goes through. Kevin Gonzalez. Oh, Channing was off the track. Oh, yeah. So Channing actually Gonzalez gets up. Gonzalez is up to third. Gable's up to fourth. Channing fifth and Silic sixth. And it's the white flag, boys. Last lap. So Silic and Channing are on the outside looking in. They're about to go crazier than the kindergartner on a sugar high to try to get up into this main event. <laughs> oh, I love it. Speaking of white, talking about the white flags, we got Charles Gable repping a, a very white setup here. He's got a white sweatshirt on with an all-white Kawasaki. Billick just did a front flip off a of hay bale, somehow landed it. Not sure how that worked. Oh, he's down again, though, and he rage quit. The dream is over for Thomas Silic. Will not be partaking in the Southwick National tonight. Looks like Powers will, though, as he still runs in the second spot. Sidehoff has worked his way back into the lead and is cruising. I don't know if anything's safe out here as rough as this track is. That's a good point. We've seen a couple of different lead changes in this one, and it's only a four-lap race. Gonzalez is coming. Charles Gable is not too far back. And Channing, obviously, on that 125, wants to make it in, so... Yeah, yeah, Channing's closing that gap a bit. It was over three seconds. It's down to two. Gable probably trying to milk it in a little bit here and take it easy. Yeah. And Channing just pinning it, and there's the opening right there. Channing sees it. He's going inside. That's a tough line for a 125, but he gets the power down somewhat nicely going through the goalie. And out the other side, he's sending it. Gable almost loops out. Oh, this is going to come down to the line as it looks like Sidehoff is about to cross the line. Oh, oh, saves oh it. wow. He stays on the bike, though. So potentially a mistake from Powers. Gonzalez or Gable would give him a chance still. Oh, Gonzalez the off moto. the track. Powers is going to go through into the moto, so all Donut MX fans out there are jumping for joy as his machine front flips over the line. Gonzalez goes through, and Gable will also get into the show. Chris Channing... Falls just short. I'm sure he's not too disappointed, though. He ripped up a 125, got some stream time. For sure, for sure. And I guess it's time. We should probably preview these motos real quick because we're going to get this thing underway. And do you think there's a surprise at the top of the 250 qualifying, Kellen? I would care to wager not if I was a betting man. 
But he didn't actually get the top time last week, so maybe it's not Colton Mitchell. He made up for it this week by running at 217. With everyone else in the field's 219 and above, Colton <laughs> Mitchell back on top of qualifying. Jordan Moxie was fastest last week, second fastest this week. Sean Klein continuing his run towards that championship. Third fastest, Brock Pearson continuing to go fast, along with Ben Seberg, another good qualifying time. A couple things stand out to me. Ryan Mahan up in sixth, maybe put a little more time in this week. Obviously, we know he's been really fast in the past. Also, I'm looking down to see where he is at. Um, last qualifying spot guaranteed in, actually, 36th place. I know Zoe Cross is riding 125 this week, so we just saw Channing not make it. We will at least have one two-stroke in the field in the small bike class to keep an eye on. Right on, yeah. We uh, Zoe actually messaged me right before this race and said that he was doing it for the stream. So hopefully he rips up that 125. Uh, that's kind of a, a a thing that I think we're going to expect to see the rest of the season, though, is Colt Mitchell not only being the fastest qualifier, but doing so by a hefty margin as Seidhoff has kind of fallen off and other challengers that were fast at the beginning of the season seem to have hit a bit of a wall and Mitchell just keeps on getting stronger and stronger, so I'm not too surprised that he's almost two seconds a lap faster than anybody else on this track. At the same point, I did spend some time talking to Mitchell, our points leader. Doesn't really gel with the sand tracks, and this one in particular, he didn't dislike it necessarily, but was having trouble getting those laps put together. We'll see how that comes in the racing. I mean, that's the one thing that we've seen from Mitchell this year is he has had some difficulties at times putting the motos together, I think the rougher track will actually benefit him. We will see. Speaking of the points, 25-point lead coming in here for Colton Mitchell, but Sean Klein has been really strong and coming on strong as of late. He was a rookie at the end of last year. This is first full season in the pro ranks. He's climbed to second in the series, and I know you mentioned side off pretty far out of this. He's sitting, oh, let's see, 30, about 40 points back now. So not completely out of it. But definitely he's going to need some luck on his hand. Gebhardt moves up to the four spot, and Brock Pearson round out the top five in points coming into this round in the 250 class. Yeah, so at least we could say we might be set for a good race, whether or not Mitchell makes it interesting by getting a good start. We're obviously going to just about find out. But as we go into the motos on this one, we're about to have the parade lap for 250 Moto 1. Chris, maybe want to give us the keys to the race? Oh, let's come up with something awesome here. It is MX338 in Southwick, Massachusetts. It's rough. It's gnarly. So, keys to the race on the 250. First and foremost, really deep traction on the 250. You have to keep your momentum going. That means minimize mistakes, quit crashing. So minimize mistakes, key number one to the race, which will allow you to carry your momentum. Obviously, not being on the ground on a rough track like this is going to be huge. Always important. But here, the 250's corner speed is going to reign supreme and not over pushing it to where you're washing out. Key number two, going to be have fun. If you are having fun, you're going to flow around the track a lot better. If you try to over push the track because you're frustrated or upset, you will end up on the ground. You will probably rage quit. You probably will break your controller and you won't even be lining up for the next moto. Maybe not even next week. And the third one. Honestly, it comes, it's back, it's already done, and it's qualifying. And the reason being is gate pick. The right side of this starting gate is extremely unfair. They, even the inside gates, because they cut over very far to the left, it's the way it is in real life as well. So getting a good qualifying time was super important this week, so you get a good gate pick, get a good start, and avoid the chaos that will 100% ensue on a challenging track like this one. All right, so there are your race tech keys to the race. And obviously, we are going to also highlight the uh, versus PC one to watch. Chris, who you got this week? All right. Well, I'm going to go. I'm actually going to look at qualifying and pick somebody. All right. I'm going to try actually, to find I that Actually, I know person. exactly who we're going to pick. We're going to pick the 37, Orion Mahan. I just want to make sure that he's actually here. I'm sure he is. Yes, he is. I talked about it a little bit when we talked about qualifying. Not that long ago, he was one of the guys that people were talking about winning 450 races and championships really hasn't been that guy again but the fact that he qualified six tonight tells me he's put some time on this track and i think he's going to be a threat so let's make him the split fire number 37 ryan mahan the versus pc one to watch all right so we will keep tabs on mr ryan mahan as the moto goes on even if he's buried in the pack I'd like to keep an update on guys that uh, are deep in the pack or also running up front 
And that is the point of the versus PC one to watch. We keep an eye on these guys and see how they're doing as the race progresses. We are just about set to go though. 250 Moto 1 is going to be lined up and ready to go as these guys are finishing up their parade lap. Looks like they're all hauling around the track, but obviously they're just kind of scoping it out one last time, getting a feel for the track. Here's a look at your points leader, Colton Mitchell, coming off a perfect week at Redbud last week. Don't think it can what, get much better uh, than that. Let's introduce something a little new, Kellen, since we have a minute before this finishes up. You know, the only thing more bold than Famimax design graphics are our predictions we're about to make, Kellen. Give me a bold <laughs> prediction. Oh, man, bold prediction. Uh, Zoe Cross, top 10 on a 125. That's really bold because you know, <laughs> I was actually thinking he might score a point, which would be bold. Um, being where he's been finishing and knowing, I mean, third qualified 36th, I am going to make the bold prediction that whoever wins the 250 class goes 1-1. One, one. Ooh, I like that one because this could be a track where starts could be kind of a big key, and if somebody gets, say, a bad start in the first moto but could win the second moto, I don't know. We'll see how that plays out. And obviously, we'll see how our bold predictions play out. I am going to take a look at Jake Rose. He looks like he's in a pretty good spot on the gate here. The number 70 architect machine is JLV. Moonwalks his way off the track. Let's go racing from Southwick. Oh, I see a great start wheeling down the start straight. Salty Walty Gebhardt, but there's Jake Rose coming from the outside. And all kinds of chaos. Devin Ryan had a good one, goes down, but Jake Rose off with the whole shot. Jonathan Hughes, always a good starter, runs in second. Gebhardt third. James Schuler and Jeremy Cohen, our run for MV Films, your top five over the hill. Here comes Pearson. Cross on the 125, and Craig Leak crosses up into the fifth spot on the 125 versus PC. Fam and Max Ryder getting it done for all the two-stroke fans out there. All right, a lot of action early on, seeing some riders going down, but it is Jake Rose who leads the way early on, got a great jump and a great start. And ripped that whole shot from the middle of the gate. Jonathan Hughes already under attack from Salty Walty. Gebhardt down the inside. Looks like he might have the pass made, but Hughes is fighting back and shuts the door. Oh, and Gebhardt, oh, Gebhardt gets Hart's... kicked down. And that's a very common line around the outside. A lot of guys going to have to ditch him. As holy crap crosses up to fourth on the 125. James Schuler, great start for him. Let's see what he can do with it. The team Volcom rider up into the three ride. Oh, we got riders down, including Zoa Cross, as Foster, Foster also stacked up. Yeah, so a couple other guys had to avoid Don Klein him. Klein and Craig Leak were both down as well. Klein, of course, one of our championship contenders. I'm going to look through the field here and see if we can find our points leader, Colton Mitchell, early on in this thing. Seidhoff's back in 34th. Ryan Mahan, our first PC one to watch, is in 37th. Brock Pearson, a good qualifier, 36th. Where did Colton Mitchell go? I did not see him, so I'm going to rip through your guys again and see where I can find him. Slotting in now. Rose continues to lead, but he's not getting away very quickly from Hughes, who's kind of coming with 20th. him. So Mitchell just inside of points right now, but all of his other real main contenders other than Gebhardt are somewhat buried in the field. As we got two Brits running up front in the sand, James Schuler on the five... 23 team Volcom machine is about to come under attack from Austin Eklund and Clinton Martin. You know what? Jake the Snake Rose started off the series extremely strong at the opening rounds. Kind of has fallen off as of late, but with this good start in the main competition buried in the field, could this be his opportunity to grab a moto win on the number 70 Architect machine? It very well could be. Either way, these two guys are already sprinting away at the front as we've got a crazy battle. Eklund goes down in fourth, but Gebhardt and Martin were throwing sideways over the finish line as they're trying to track down Schuler in the three spot. The Salty Walty doing work right now, trying to get around Simp System decal rider on the number 891. Wow. The Super Mario plumbing machine of wow. Walter Gebhardt goes around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, oh. legs off. Clinton Martin barely is able to dodge him. That was a crazy line from Gebhardt, oh, just held it Jake on longer. Rose washes out. He was up to a three-second lead, pushed the front end of the turn, drops it down to a 1.2-second lead, and Jonathan Hughes is smelling blood in the water. Yeah, curious to see how these guys play around with each other up front. Countrymen may not necessarily be friends on the track. 
They're going to try to get away, though, and the best way to do that is to hook up together and start running quick times rather than battle it out early on, but we'll see if that is the scenario. Jonathan Hughes has been getting some great starts this season. Unfortunately, he's had a little bit of an anchor tied to him. But maybe that anchor's going along a little smoother here in the sand as he runs up in the two spot. Going to try not to fall off the pace here in this moto. And not fall off the bike either as that's kind of a key to the race here. Seen already a couple guys having early fall offs. It hasn't affected Gebhardt too much, but obviously our points leader Mitchell buried and Seidhoff getting a bad start from the outside gate. Both Not buried, buried in too the far is Colton Mitchell. He just passed Josh Betts up into the number eight spot. He is charging to the front of the field rapidly. He's avoided some of that early chaos to get himself up into a good spot early in the moto. Yeah, and this is one of those tracks where if you can run times that are significantly faster than your competition, um, then you can even take lines that you're not comfortable with and make passes. And so far, it looks like M Mitchell's doing a great job of that. I'm impressed with uh, James Schuler and the Team Volcom machine running in the three spot. Yeah, Schuler is uh, holding his own right now. Martin has been giving chase for a little while and has yet to make any inroads or make a attempt at a pass yet. Getting a little bit closer now as we reach the end of a lap number three for these guys. We're actually going on to lap number three, but the completion of lap number two. Oh, Clinton Martin with a little mistake over that finish line, but he is definitely drawn close. He's trying to put the moves on James Schuler, who has a podium ride going on only a couple laps into this thing, but I'm sure he's pumped and he's actually stretching it back out on Martin. I think it's a battle of mistakes here on the 250s. You make a small mistake, you lose, you know, half a second, three quarters of a second, and then the other guy makes a little mistake. Not a fall off or a crash like you see on most tracks, but just a little slip. As now Jake Rose has fallen to the number two spot, Jonathan Hughes to the lead, and Schuler is reeling those guys in with heavy pressure. Clinton Martin continuing to follow around James Schuler. It's like a forum bully following around, waiting for the mistake <laughs> to move on by. Always new and uh, surprises every week in this 250 class. And right now, uh, four out of the top five riders are triple-digit riders, meaning that uh, we did not see them very often in Race Factory Gaming competition last year, or at least not so running near the front as Schuler gets passed by Martin down the inside. So Martin on the 891 goes to the inside of the 523 of Schuler. Bad news for these guys is lurking back up to the number six spot is your points leader, Colton Mitchell. And he is on his way to the front of the field. He's about to put the moves on Clay Alfrey. It looks like as they drop down into the valley. Yeah, Mitchell looks like he's just carrying so much more speed than these guys. Able to keep the power down. Arch out his corners a little bit better. Alfrey scrubbing down the tabletop into the canyon. Trying to hold things on a little bit longer, but I think it's just uh, only a matter of time before Mitchell makes a pass here. Actually lost a little time there. He tried to work the outside of the Buckley Burn berm turn and wasn't able to make it happen. Lost some time as they now go up into the gravity cavity. Colton Mitchell trying to close that gap back down on Clay Alfrey. Out front, 10 second lead for Jonathan Hughes over Jake Rose. We lost Schuler back to the four spot. He's dropped off some time. He was following Clinton Martin really close after he was passed up. He's now falling back, and Alfrey definitely under pressure from Colton Mitchell now. Yeah, Mitchell almost had an inside line there coming through the back part of the track towards the finish line, and now he's got a good drive coming up to the tabletop. They're going to go almost side by side. Oh, Mitchell jumps off the track, though. He's bringing Edward Mora with him on the Evergood machine. The number 48 looking good, and he's actually reeling in this battle a little bit as Mitchell makes some mistakes. Yeah, Mora seems to have some good speed this year, some tremendous pace out of him, but oftentimes finds himself on the ground, and that has been something that he's tried to work on this season. But definitely running a good pace, trying to stick with these guys as Mitchell again working different lines, trying to make something happen with Alfrey. Second fastest qualifier, Jordan Moxie, has made his way up into the 10 spot, so he's climbed inside the top 10 with there a fierce battle going on Mitchell. behind him. Mitchell got John to the Klein. inside and got around Alfrey. 
up to the 16 spot to update everyone. Our versus PC.com one to watch into the 17 spot. Battling out with our two stroke is across. And Walter Gephardt's actually behind them and laying on the ground. And I have not found Jared Seidhoff going back through the pack. If he wasn't eliminated from championship contention coming in here, he is now as he has already quit the moto. Jared Seidhoff. Ah, uh, going back to look for him and didn't find him. Tim did come across Brett Powers, who has though. a lot of fans in chat, though, but he's just outside of the points. Battle up front, though, is between Husey and Jake Rose. Once again, Rose is inching back in. Must have been a fall off or a big mistake from Hughes because he lost eight seconds. Oh, he pushes the front end there. It's going to open the door even more for Jake Rose. Well, it's definitely tightened up at the front very quickly here. Rose seems to have the pace on Hughes. Last lap around, it was a 224.8 for Jonathan Hughes. His best lap so far, Jake Rose is 225.9 is his best lap, but he lost the lead because he ran a 237.6, but now he's trying to regain it from the 134 of Hughes. Going on board with Rose now to take a look at how difficult this track here at Southwick really is for these 250Fs to carry their momentum as he lays down a 224.6, so he updates his fastest lap of the race thus far, approaching the 10-minute mark. Yeah, the onboard camera definitely really shows how challenging the track is. Rougher than the Chicago streets at 3 a.m. There's not really any duallys to go on tonight, Colin, so we're just going to have to stick with my shitty puns. That's good enough for me, man. I've just been uh, putting back some beers and getting ready for the racing tonight, so I'm ready to go loosened up if they uh, want to use that term. Oh, oh Rose is Jake sending Rose it. Woo! That was a big one, too. Clint we were Martin just on board with the, the three. save. Oh, wait, he's been in the three spot, but Mitchell's up to fourth. Schuler drops to fifth. Alfre and Mora run six and seven. They're all not far off this lead group that we could definitely see tighten up as Jonathan Hughes has a 4.3 second lead now after that mistake from Jake Rose. Mitchell, though, closing up on Clinton Martin. Martin, 227, his fastest lap, last lap around, 222 flat. Colton Mitchell, Prime Design Graphics, number 10, man on the move. Yeah, and I think this is what was expected. So I'm start there in 20th and just kind of worked his way through the field a little bit quicker than maybe I thought he could, but he's already up here battling for the third spot. And uh, just like it was with Alfrey, I'm sure Martin knows someone fast is coming, and it's in the form of the number 10 of Colton Mitchell. And he's trying to get to the front early and make this a snooze fest for us, and... Wow. wow, I think Clinton Martin made, I don't know if he made a mistake or he just let him go right there. I almost feel like he let him go on by. Well, now he's making mistakes and losing a big chunk of time now to Mitchell, who is all alone in third and just trying to go to work on making up some time to Jake Rose, who has now lost a little bit more time to Jonathan Hughes, so it's spread up at the front. James Schuler still runs in the five spot. Edward Moore is in sixth. Then we go back and see Alfrey ahead of Eklund. Devin Ryan closing in. On Eklund, Jordan Moxie is right behind Devin Ryan. The battle for 11th is fierce right now. Sean Klein all over the back door of Jeremy Kohenauer. The MV Films number 42 doing everything he can to hold off second in points. Sean Klein on the ever good number 74. There it goes Klein around the inside into the gravity cavity. Oh! You might see Julies, but Klein throws her down. Dang, I think Klein almost dragged Barr on the top of that one. That was a good oh, one. Kohenauer oh! gets into his back wheel. And now Klein's going to set his sights on Devin Ryan, and it looks like he's going to close that gap rapidly as they go down Henry Highway. Sean Klein has a ridiculous amount of drive compared to what Devin Ryan had. Behind that uh, versus PC one to watch is Ryan Mahan. He's going after Jeremy Kona, or just got up from that tip over. So we got a couple battles going on here just outside of the top ten as Mahan jumps off the track but able to corral it back. And right behind them, we have Jack Zars, the rookie, battling out with another rookie, Isaiah Dickerson, for the 14 and 15 spots. So a lot of action just oh. outside the top 10, as you said. Dickerson down, and Zars hits him and has a fall-off crash. That was one of the slowest crashes I've ever seen. And he gets passed by three guys in the process. Maybe, oh, Pearson 
coming in, gets the pass done. Tyler Fry is in this group. Daniel Mills making one of his lone appearances in the outdoor campaign that we've seen this year is up here as well. So he's in the points wow. as Dickerson gets going ahead of him. I just saw Brock Pearson lag punt Tyler Fry. Uh, uh, not even in the same rut, completely different ruts, and Fry got the short end of that stick. Looking back up front a oh. little bit further, we got Mora versus Alfrey going into a battle here. I believe this is just outside of the top five. Definitely, I think, the best performance we've seen from Alfrey this season thus far. Yeah, Alfrey used to be one of the top players in this game a few years ago. If I'm not mistaken, uh, won a few 250 Supercross races. Was in uh, championship contention one year even. But kind of faded off into the MX Simulator Oblivion. But he's back, putting in some good motos out here. Wow, he just flowed through that turn. And man, is he putting the pressure on Edward Morin behind them. I believe that is Moxie coming up on the 57 Architect Machine. So far, it looks like Mora's been able to respond to that pressure pretty well. Battle yeah, for the lead. looks like he's the one reeling him in right now. Battle for the lead, closing in. Sorry to cut you off, Chris, but Jake Rose is already catching back up to Jonathan Hughes again. These guys are playing a little bit of cat and mouse at the front. Yeah, fast lap of the race, 222.9 for him. For Jake Rose last time around, 224.7. Hughes not far off his fast time. But Rose definitely showing he has a little more pace right now at this point in the moto as we just hit the halfway point. Oh, and Rose man. in the same corner makes a mistake again, pushing it a little too hard. Let's jump into that moto chasing top 10 rundown. Brought to you by the fine folks over at Moto Chasing. They have some sick moto content, a lot of amateur national coverage. YouTube.com slash moto chasing. Check it out. Somewhere out here is Sally Slomo Chase Dunamit, the Tennessee Warrior on the track but out front Jonathan Hughes continuing to lead the way I would say the most laps he's probably ever led in an RF Pro race looking good aboard the 134 Jake Rose architect number 70 continues to give Chase in the two spot gonna try to close that gap back up three seconds behind then comes Colton Mitchell he's got nine seconds to make up almost ten just to get to the number two spot and battle for the lead but Mitchell's getting a good race going so far Padding his points lead. Clinton Martin, system decal, 891, runs in the number four ride. Great ride going so far for Clinton Martin. James Schuler also good performance on the team. Volcom 523. I'm sure he'd be pumped with a top five ride as he goes up out of the valley and heads towards the versuspc.com scrub table. Doesn't throw any scrub here on the 250. Edward Mora riding forever good. Slots in at the number six spot. He throws it a little sideways over the table. Back in seventh, we find Jordan Moxie, who is charging hard, carried a lot of speed. You could tell just by how deep he jumped over that table as he rolls into the Buckley Berm. Moxie is trying to charge to the front of the pack with Clay Alfrey right with him. Split fire spark bugs and number 188. Running in the nine spot, we find our second place in points rider, ever good Sean Klein. Klein has to make up some points right now. Yeah, it's Mitchell's moving his way to the front of the field. Rounding out the top ten, we find relaxed attire, number 32, Devin Ryan. Right behind him, we're going to go to the top 15. Jeremy Cohenauer, MV Films 42. Then we find our versus PC.com one to watch. Running up in the number 12 spot, split fires Ryan Mahan. Austin Eklund giving chase on the 241. Then we find D Mills. It's Danny Boy, Dan Daniel Mills on the DRT racing number 31. And rounding out the top 15, we find a battle. Brock Pearson all over the back wheel of Isaiah Dickerson, who got picked up. He's got a team now riding for DRT on the number 260. Just made his pro debut a few weeks ago had a great performance in Moto1 at Redbud he drops outside the top 15 here as Brock Pearson makes the move that's been the Moto Chasing top 15 rundown here at Southwick MX338 oh yeah Isaiah Dickerson just did his best Weston Pike right there too as he literally plowed over a hay bale and did not go down I'm not too sure how he did that but he's going to try to keep working on Brock Pearson who was able to get around him while you're running through that list Looking forward again and seeing if we can Dick find Rose ourselves a battle. Rose is closed back up once again, and now lapped riders are coming into play. 
We'll see if this changes the dynamic of the battle for the lead. It's down to about a second. Rose just absolutely shredded that middle run in the turn. Bad What's going to happen? Bad news for the championship. It looks like we have Walter Gebhardt also out of this moto, so your uh, third and oh, fourth in the championship are out. Our leader is having some issues with the 163. I believe that's Marcondes Fitosa, who yeah. I believe just moved up to the pros, and he's already causing issues. Not getting the hell out of the way as he's in absolutely the dead last guy running on the track. Get out of the way, man. Uh, bummer for Hughes as he... Drops out of the race lead, and Rose takes it back over now as we have reached the 18-minute mark. And here comes Colton Mitchell. He can see Hughes now, and it's not going to be long before he gets up to his back tire and tries to move into the two spot. And I think Jake Rose is probably thinking more about Colton Mitchell coming forward than he is about his countryman Jonathan Hughes at this point. Tracking yeah, the Mitchell's progress. the man on the move right now. Holy crap. Around that berm, Mitchell is on the gas. He's crushing it like orange soda out there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Going on board now with Mitchell. I was just about to say it looks like Moxie is kind of the man on the move as well right now. He's gone from outside of the top ten to move into fifth around. James Schuler just took a look back there and saw it. But on board with Mitchell now as he tries to track down the 134 of Jonathan Hughes. the fastest section of the track filled with rough rollers over this hump and send it off the single I'm trying to figure out where Mitchell's making all his time up but honestly it's just he's carrying so much speed he never really loses his flow around the corners our lapper getting up and moving out of the way he goes These guys are running really similar lines, or at least Hughes is to Mitchell, but Mitchell's just executing them with a little bit more momentum. And he's so good when it comes to working over these bumps as well as Hughes goes down. And a couple of riders yeah. down in the turn as well. There's a bunch of lappers Mitchell. down. Mitchell into the two spot now. So he's six and a half seconds back from your race leader, Jake Rose. We are approaching 21 minutes into this moto and I'm going to stick on board with Mitchell just to watch the finish of this lap and see how many more chunks oh. he can take away from Rose. Hughes is down again now he had 26 seconds over our fourth place rider Clinton Martin who has pressure from Moxie so I don't know I know you're on board but if you want to jump back to a battle here the fourth place battle is on. I'm just going to finish out this lap with Mitchell and we'll head back there in just a moment as he continues to chunk oh he's down though he had taken about a second and a half off of the lead since we went on board with him, but he is down. So now we're back watching that battle between Martin and Moxie. The Aussie, Clint Martin, going to work on defending his position from the Brit, Jordan Moxie. Interesting. Moxie ran the outside there at the tree turn, known as the Buckley Berm, and didn't lose time where everyone else I've seen use that outside was losing time. So Moxie carried some great corner speed through there and maybe a small mistake from Clinton Martin. Yeah, split lines here as well. Moxie going to try to slingshot down here through Henry Highway and make the move. Got to run. Yeah, it looks like he's pulled almost alongside at this point as Martin continues to hold the spot. But how much longer? Moxie's going to try an down outside the line. Inside. Oh, look at that. Coming together. Oh, they split apart. And Moxie sweeps around the outside and goes down but able to stay on two wheels. That was actually some really clean racing from those guys. I don't know if you could tell from your camera view, but both Martin and Moxie checked up a little bit to make sure that they didn't come together. Most times in those situations, one of the riders at least keeps it completely pinned, doesn't care about the other guy. Both those guys were very respectful with each other. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that they were definitely trying to be respectful, but that also might be a small product of lag issues as well. Both riders are uh, not necessarily the closest to the American server. So if you can't see each other, you obviously can't really race each other cleanly into the corner, and they might have checked up not to cause any drama there. Just to keep tabs on things, 21.7 seconds is the lead for Jake Rose right now. He's got a monstrous lead, but there's a lot of time left here in the moto. 
another battle going on between teammates here for the number six spot as Sean Klein trying to put the pressure on Edward Mora. It was a good ride through the field so far from Klein. When we latched onto him earlier on, he was just moving up inside of the top 15. Now looking for a possible top five here as he's going to get around Mora and then have a chance to go after that battle that we were just watching between Moxie and Martin. A mistake from Mora is going to allow Klein to close up a little bit more. See if he tries a different line here, he's going to follow him through. He's going to follow through the middle. These two are teammates. So obviously they um, know each other a little bit more friendlier than most. But they probably are also in the same TeamSpeak or Discord chat talking to each other about this race scenario. Klein obviously in a much better championship potential scenario than Mora. And while I don't think that there are team orders that often in this game, I do think that sometimes it's nice to be a little friendlier with each other. Yeah, at least try not to take each other out, right? As Klein is carrying some crazy speed through some really unorthodox lines and spots. Nice scrub up over that jump. Moore is definitely not giving it to him, but Klein's just going to take it anyway, I think, as he pulls alongside and gets the move done. So Not is, too far in front of him. He'll find Jordan yeah. Moxie and Clinton Martin, for that matter. He needs all the points that he can get right now. As our leader, Jake Rose, is on the ground, so his lead is going to really shrink because he's down oh, on that fast no. section of the track. Has to go backwards to get back going. All right, I'll wait for so. timing and scoring to update here as Colton Mitchell is going to be so much closer now. And it's 10 second gap. Now that's a single fall off gap for Jake Rose. We've got five minutes and two laps to work with here. And Jake Rose is looking for his first career moto victory. His first career victory of any kind in the States when it comes to race factor gaming racing. But can Mitchell run him down? Mitchell has not necessarily been the most dominant force this year. Redbud was by far the best weekend we've seen out of him all year long. So it's not like he knows how to win these things in a complete outright sense either. And I don't know what to do, whether we watch Rose for the, and Mitchell for the lead or if we go back to the number four, five, six spots where there's an intense battle going on. Clinton, Martin, Jordan, Moxie, Sean Klein all right there dealing with a lapper as well. well I'm going to take a look at Klein because he seems to be the one that has been charging the fastest through this field and he obviously is almost to the back of this group so he is looking for more and more points. Obviously, Mitchell's still going to gain some points on this one, but minimizing the damage thus far is Sean Klein with a tremendous ride through the field, and I believe, oh, no, that was a lapped rider that he just went around. Yeah, that was close down there in the bottom corner. Look at all the lappers though. A lot of guys right behind Klein, actually right in between Klein and Mora, there are two other lappers trying to get out of the way. Meanwhile, this battle in front of him between Moxie and Martin just continues to go on oh, as Martin, Martin big mistake. mistake. Yeah, and Klein is gonna scrub it down and get by him as well, and he's gonna set his sights on Moxie. So just when Moxie thought he might have been out of the battling gamble that he was in there, he's gonna go right back to work with Klein <laughs> breathing down his neck. Klein just also, just like Mitchell's carrying a lot of momentum everywhere around the track, really seems to have found his flow. Man, Klein is just whipping everything out. He scrubs that single few corners before this really nicely, and he stayed a little bit lower than Moxie there. Looks like he's really got a good comfortable setup on that Evergood machine. Trying a different line here, carrying a little more momentum, ended up having to check up and there's lap riders in front of him. This is not the easiest place for a lapper to get out of the way, especially if they break their momentum and their flow as well. It could cause them to swap out here right in front of the leaders. There's Zoe Cross and I believe Chase Donovan battling way back in the field. I think that's the second time Donovan's been lapped in the moto. 
Well, Klein sure looks. Rolls on by. Klein sure looks a lot nicer down that section than Jake Rose is <laughs> riding through that. Rose every lap looks like he's just tightening the shrinker and hoping it gets it done. Klein looks <laughs> like he's flowing down the hill, jumping into the corner, smooth as butter. Oh man, speaking of Rose, the lead is down to five seconds and shrinking. We'll have to check lap times this by and by as Klein continues to try to work on Moxie to get up into the number four spot. And I'm sure he's hoping as well that Jake Rose can pull off this win and limit the damage. Klein's got to run here on Moxie. Oh man, this is a great battle. These two are riding each other so hard and clean though. Riding them hard, huh, Kellen? Yeah, you know how I do it. Oh, man. Klein is really ripping through the corners, though. He's trying. Moxie definitely looks like he's pushing the envelope a little more. As Klein just... <laughs> oh, oh, my man. gosh. He's got that scrub dialed in. This is a tremendous battle, though. Mitchell down to four and a half seconds up front, so we'll obviously want to take a look at that soon. We are approaching the 30-minute mark, but those guys have already gone through. Not too far ahead of Moxie either is Hughes now, as he's kind of worked his way backwards into this battle. He's about four seconds ahead of this one. Wow, those guys just carrying so much speed around that final turn, scrubbing down the finish face. Man, I'm really impressed so far with Moxie's ability to respond to this pressure. Klein came up like a force, and they have both really dropped Clinton Martin. Now, pretty soon, this very well could be a battle for the podium. Go back on board with Klein as he is just working these lines, and this is what I mean. He just jumps, three jumps down the hill, goes to the outside, carries his momentum. But Moxie, so smooth in that middle line, doesn't lose any time. And Hughes making a mistake up in the distance. Oh, it's close. We have hit the 30 minute mark, so that means two lap board will be coming out this time by. Dang, Moxie just scrubbed it down hard on that tabletop, almost couldn't bring it back. This is absolutely pushing this battle up to Jonathan Hughes though. He is just inching his way towards this one. Just a quick update on the lead. It's actually grown back out to 4.7 seconds as Mitchell must have had a mistake. Oh my and gosh. Now Jonathan Hughes is yeah. in the sights of Jordan Moxie. Moxie is all over him. He's stuck in a sandwich. Mistake from Hughes. There goes Moxie. Moxie around the outside gets it done. Klein's going to shuffle to the outside line here and try to carry his momentum. Not able to get a good enough drive though as Hughes gets away cleanly. Might actually try to make a pass back on Moxie as he has a pretty good drive coming through the corner here. He's looking aggressive down that inside. Oh, look at the speed Klein carried around the outside to try to get his way back into this battle. Three jump, yeah, <laughs> three whips in the jump right there. Man, oh man, oh, two lap man. board is out. 2.7 seconds is the lead for Jake Rose. And Lapper's in front of him. Oh, here's Klein with a great line. He's going to get to the inside and makes the pass on Jonathan Hughes and then swings a little bit wide for authority. Hughes is trying to fight back, but Klein has got it. Oh, Hughes actually went down, so actually there's contact. Yeah, Hughes clipped the back of Klein's back wheel. He went to kind of cut back to the corner. I don't think he realized he was there and went on down as Jake Rose has some heavy pressure coming from Colton Mitchell. They're both pushing it really hard right now. A lap and a half to go, a lapper in the mix. Lapper gets nicely out of the way for Rose. He's gotta be feeling it at this point, obviously making some small mistakes. Mitchell, 
is hauling. He's got to watch out for this lapped rider here, the 210 machine. Don't want to be wrong, but that might be... Uh, Logan Lightsoul. Logan... No, that'd be Mikael Ming Woodley, if I'm not mistaken. Lightsoul would be on the 201 that's just behind him. Harry White is the 210. Ah, oh, 210 of Harry White. All right, this is going to come down to the last lap by the looks of it. Mitchell not close enough. Oh, mistake from Rose. To get to Rose yet, but it is certainly tightening up here. In and out of the gully and headed down to the backside of the track that's mostly invisible from the rest of the track. A ton of momentum around the outside from Mitchell. All right, here we go. We have got a last lap battle shaping up on our hands at Southwick as they come down through the last corner. It is Jake Rose versus Colton Mitchell over the line. White flag is waving. Can Rose pick up his first career Race Factor Gaming Moto Victory or will Mitchell continue his dominating oh, streak? Rose, Rose off the track, off the track and slides out and he can't get the bike going. He's going to have to swing even wider and might miss a timing gate by the looks of it. Yeah, he definitely missed a timing gate. Mitchell out front. And I think that's all she wrote. Mitchell's probably going to cruise this one in. He's got a good lead to work with. And Rose now we see Sean Klein has fallen off the back of Moxie. He's in fourth. He's in danger of losing a truckload of points here in this first moto. Not what is needed from Sean Klein, as actually Jonathan Hughes not that far behind him. Looking for a battle here at the tail end of the top ten and not really finding one. James yeah. Shuler back in 12th trying to put the pressure on Daniel Mills for the 11 spot. Everybody certainly is pretty spread out. Jack Zars is also right behind Schuler there, so we got kind of a three-rider battle. Yep, and then behind them in 14th is our versus PC.com. One to watch, so right, man, at least looking to score points, which is a small victory. Daniel Mills down, so Zars and Schuler are going to go by up into the 11 spot. That's really tough for Mills right there. It sucks when it's late in the moto. And you wish you were just all alone when that crash happened so you didn't lose any spots, but in Mills' case, lost two spots and really lost a chance to make up another spot as well, so really it felt like losing three spots. Looking back up front, though, Colton Mitchell. Coming back down. He's got about three corners left to go, and... Man, that was a pretty well-mastered come-from-behind ride for Colton Mitchell. I tell you what, the battle for second is not over. Jake Rose has some issues with William St. Laurent going down into the pit. He's only got five seconds with a few turns left on Jordan Moxie, but a mistake from Rose would give up that spot. Here comes Mitchell, though, up front. The number 10 machine continues his win streak as he takes the win here. Moto number one at Southwick goes to Colton Mitchell. We'll look back at that battle now. Looks like Rose will hang on to the spot. Yes, he will, but obviously he will be frustrated and disappointed in himself. Might have had a win on the cards there. Moxie makes it an Architect 2-3. Oh, battle for fourth is going down to the line. Sean Klein and Jonathan Hughes side by side. Hughes is looking gonna inside. He's going to send it. For the oh, kill. Klein able to stay on two wheels and gets to the line in fourth. Hughes with a fifth. Clinton Martin wasn't too far back, so Hughes is fortunate he wasn't off the bike in that corner as he comes across in sixth. Probably Clint Martin. fortunate he didn't kill him there because that would have almost been a punt. <laughs> yeah, that was um, that was a tad aggressive. Last corner, though. I, I mean, I'm cool with some aggressive racing. I just, I don't know. It was pretty borderline. I'm glad I don't have to review it because he didn't crash him, so it won't be protested. <laughs> there Mora comes across. Here comes Jeremy Cohenauer. Nice ride up in eighth. Connor has been sneaky good this outdoor season, especially as of late. Yeah, and he's going to hold off Brock Pearson, who's putting on a nice charge there at the end of the moto, who comes across in ninth, so Kohenauer eighth. Pearson ninth. Devin Ryan is battling it out with Josh Betts, who's a lap down. So Devin Ryan's going to be the last guy inside of the top ten here on the 32 Relax Attire Machine. 
We have another battle here for 11th. Jack Zars trying to hold on over split fire runner Ryan Mahan, who looks like he's absolutely shredding the gnar right now. Yeah, he is hauling tail in our versus PC one to watch. Looks like he will just fall short of catching Zars before the end. He will come across in 12th. Zars 11th. Daniel Mills beats Schuler to the line, so a good moto for Schuler. But Mills and Schuler go 13 14. Jordan Foster going to pick home, take home a 15th place right there. Alfrey somewhat all alone over Austin Eklund. But Phil Bull is all over Eklund, so this is another battle coming to the line. Let's take a look here. Phil Bull trying everything he can. Make a last ditch effort here. Make up an extra point and some bragging rights. Or keep it close for cuts. A rider getting going right in front of them. That certainly was close. And Tyler Fry looks to be the last guy on the lead lap. St. Laurent, the last guy to score a point. Leitzel just misses out. Harry White, Dakota French, AJ Green, Chase Donovan, Josh Betts. So across did not score a point. So my bold prediction was wrong. We will still wait to see whether your bold prediction comes true. If Mitchell can turn this into a 1 1 day. We'll wait Another for rage quit from finish. Isaiah Dickerson. Brett Power still active here in 37th for Mr. Donut MX. He comes across the line. Ben Siebert qualified well. Rage quits to a 38. Gebhart rage quits. Seidhoff rage quits. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's frustrating motos for those guys, but it is all Colton Mitchell here in Moto 1 at Southwick. So stick tight with us, folks. We'll be back on the other side of this quick commercial break. Don't touch that URL bar other than to refresh it if you are having troubles with the stream. But we'll be back on the other side of this with more Ride365.com Nationals, powered by Versus PC from Southwick. RaceFactoryGaming.com would like to thank the following sponsors for their continued support.
All right, and we're back. Welcome back to the Ride365.com Nationals powered by versus PC.com. Kellen Brower and Chris Riesenberg in the booth. Chris, versus PC, you want to watch Moto 2? Go. And we are going to pick. How about Brett Powers Donut MX? He's going to be on versus PC.com. One to watch on the number 106. He has probably the most fans here in the live stream so let's keep an eye on him yeah speaking of one to watch i'm gonna watch him on the way outside as he actually hit the gate so he totally ruined it let's see who actually gets the whole shot it is gonna be Devin, Devin ryan. ryan jake rose falls down with a good start out of the inside but daniel mills tyler fry jordan foster the 298 of brandon edge had a good start he's on the ground hard Mills, Fry, Foster, Mahan with a good start this time around. Bill, uh, Phil Bull is up here. Kohenauer getting passed by Pearson up the inside. Fitosa with a good start. Moore is battling it out with Clinton Martin. Clay Alfrey oh, up here, so across. Jordan Foster almost goes third to first in one turn. I think he's going to get passed back by both guys. He's bar to bar with Daniel Mills. And Whoa. Foster shut the door very hard right there yeah, aggressively. He did. Devin Ryan was pushing it down into that off camber turn, barely saves it and holds on to the lead. He said he came from way behind in Moto 1. See what he can do with the good start here in Moto number 2. Wow, very interesting mix of guys at the front in this one, just like in the last Moto as Ryan goes down with the lead and Foster takes it over. And we got a slew of other guys trying to find their way through as Ryan gets up in the 5 spot. So now Phil First. Bull going side by side with his teammate Tyler Fry in third and fourth. Mills in second. How about the group of Cowies up front? There's four Cowies out front. Craziness. First thing, first title contender I find is Sean Klein. He was up to in 17th, up to 15th now. Jonathan Hughes, good first moto, is down on the ground in 16th. Still going through the field. Walter Gephardt, 20th. And still going on back. Looking. Colton Mitchell, 31st place. Wow. Jake Rose, 34th place. Well, this is the Moto Klein can make up a ton of points if he wants it. Speaking of down on the ground, Tyler Fry and his teammate Phil Bull got together. Fry got the worst end of that, and Sean Klein is already knocking on the door for a top 10 spot here. Oh, boy. This is going to be a good Moto as Jordan Foster... A number 41 machine is going to lead us down to complete lap number one here at Southwick. 31 of Daniel Mills is given tow. Ryan Mahan oh. runs in the three spot. <laughs> Mills about went to Indonesia. Yeah. yeah, it looked like he got a bad kick over the line, but I switched away from him. And I knew exactly what you were going for when he started saying, oh. oh. Sean Klein gets lucky there as Alfrey hit the deck. Zoe Cross has jumped off the two stroke onto the four stroke up into the number eight spot. Ah, uh, disappointing me as usual, young Zoa. Downloading a whole new pack for him just to race one moto. But how about Klein already giving chase some more? This looks like a repeat of what happened in moto number one, but it's way earlier in the race. And it's also a little higher up in the running order. Yeah, Klein's corner speed, really good. I mean, that's the one thing that you notice with the 250 guys that are at the elite level is their corner speed is next level. It's where they make their time. Is Klein trying to work on more around the outside? Did you see Klein right there? Mora checked up hard on the inside, and Klein just said, that's fine, I'll shoot over to the second rut and still almost make the pass. Now might actually have the pass done. Mora's fighting back. Klein has to give the position back. For now, he's going to try to mount another attack here. He's going to drive into the outside line. No, he's going to tuck back in and go back outside in on him. Oh, big swap there from Sean Klein. Everywhere he tries to go, Mora has an answer right now as they're reeling in Devin Ryan right in front of him. And not too far up the road is Phil Bull on the 82 Volcom machine. Klein pushing it really hard, working hard to get around his teammate. You wonder, with him being in title contention, if maybe Mora should make it a little easier for him. But, of course, team tactics Ooh. here in Sim as Mahan was down in the turn. Now well, they get a little more controversial than a Trump presidency, so <laughs> sometimes you see them, sometimes you don't. Yeah. Sometimes you hear about them after the fact because you did or didn't see them. Exactly, and uh, talked a little bit about that in the first moto, Mora versus Klein. 
And uh, someone chimed in in chat and said that Klein Our actually down. Klein actually plays silently as your leader Foster goes down. Daniel Mills to the lead. And Daniel Mills not just going to have a lead. He's going to have a monstrous yeah. lead. Yeah. As he goes up and over, it's going to be just about a fall-off lead as Phil Bowles is going to try to go into the number two spot. He ran top five for a while in moto number one. No, that was Schuler actually. Bull was right around the top ten now area, I believe. Yeah. These Volcom guys, I need to get familiar with them. I mean, we've seen them <laughs> week in and week out. I'm going to have to start to get to know them because they're consistently up here. How about Jordan it for, Foster into third. for Daniel Mills, though, one of the oldest uh, tenured MX Simulator players, I believe, is UID is under 100. You could correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, but definitely UID in the lower. UID 21. Yeah, UID 21 for Daniel Mills has played this game for quite some time and finally broke through for his first ever 250F main event win earlier this year at Daytona. Hmm. Daytona, Southwick. Any small comparisons we could make between those tracks, Chris? Subtle ones, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and possibly the roughest, sandiest tracks we in their series. Yep. <laughs> As Sean Klein going to work hard on Devin Ryan. He has disposed of Edward Mora. And they're reeled in Phil Bull and Jordan Foster. It looks like Ryan is down. I'll give you a quick update on some of our other heavy hitters while you watch at the front of the field. There's, I just found, let's see, Brock Pearson, 18th, Colton Mitchell, 19th, Jordan Moxie, 20th, Jonathan Hughes on the ground outside the top 25, and Walter Gebhardt, 35th, his championship has come completely unraveled, Jake Rose, rage quit out of the race oh, already, no. after that impressive moto number one. Frustrating night in the first moto for Rose after coughing up the win. Just got a whole lot more frustrating. I sense an incoming forum post. Really curious to see what. Oh, Mitchell Mills was down. Sorry to cut you off, Chris. Mills down with the lead, and Klein and Bull are now right with him as Foster goes back to the point. Mills oh, all the way man. to the outside is going to lose the spot to both. No, Klein lost a little drive, and now. Mills with a lot of drive might get them both back. Sean Klein has really got to kind of bite his time here, I think, with Mitchell being so far back. All he can do is just wait for these guys to make mistakes as he almost comes together with Mills down the straightaway. Three Does end up getting that spot. Turn. Yeah. Klein oh, might Mills actually have a shot right at Bull. Look at him. this. Almost side by side. Almost contact, actually, between those two. Klein's going to oh, try Klein's a different line. Straddling the run. Yeah, and mistake. he's going to get passed. Mills gets back through, scrubs it down hard, ends up in front of him, crossing and the track. And now Klein comes back underneath him. Excellent racing here at Southwick. Wow, great battle. I'm not sure if Klein is happy about this battle, though. It seems like he's riding a little bit more aggressively as he uses the outside line. Oh. He's down. That's just what I was mentioning. He really needed to kind of wait it out because, oh, man, he was not too far away from the lead, and this is just giving more and more time back to Colton Mitchell to make up ground. And that was the point that I wanted to make. So we saw Klein come from way behind in the first moto to, I believe, fourth, right? And I want to see what Mitchell can do now in that same situation because their roles were pretty much reversed. Of course, Mitchell, I guess, came back from way back in the first moto but started his charge much earlier on than Klein and found himself inside the top ten after only a couple laps. Oh, Klein Foster down on. with the lead. Not off the bike, though. Should be able to regain the keep the lead over Phil Bull, who finds himself in second. Klein makes the move on Mayhan. Update on Mitchell. He is in the 18 spot. So we still have Foster leading this thing. Phil Bull is closing up in second. Perhaps the surprise of this moto is Bull, but Daniel Mills also one of the few weeks we've seen him race this year and uh, once again finds himself at the sharp point of the field. Just uh, reminded we should probably check in on our versus PC one to watch, Chris. All right, well, let's go Looking on back and see deep. where we can find Mr. Donut M. There he is. He is running into the 31 ride right now. The 106 of Brett Powers has A.J. Green giving him chase, and he's got a little bit of a gap to make up on Brandon Hedge in front of him. He's just going to be trucking along, doing his thing. Good to Probably see that he actually to qualify. Yeah, it's good to see that he actually finished that first moto because all too often we see guys end up way outside of points, kind of 
cruising around, not really in any battles, and they just kind of rage quit out, but he finished that thing up. Makes a couple passes there. So we'll check back on him in a little bit. The battle for third is definitely good, and actually second even in the mix. Oh, Mills with a mistake. Gonna allow Edward Moore to go on by up into the three spot and give chase after Phil Bull. Mills slots into fourth, and then Sean Klein still right there in the mix. So Klein, even with that crash, still has a chance to get up there early on. And Mills and him obviously had that tremendous battle basically a lap ago now, and they're going right back to it. And I wonder. Klein's working Klein's, that same yeah. line he crashed in, but just stayed a little wider didn't cut down quite as hard that time so maybe that's where the mistake came from he was battling it out and cut down a little bit too much i definitely wonder though if klein raises mills with the same intensity that he did before to get through wow he caught him really fast right there <laughs> like it caught him off guard so he tried to dive into a different line did not run into the back of mills man klein is so good he just puts the bike exactly where he wants to Lays it over in the corners and it just floats in. Now trying an inside line here. Shows Mills a wheel, but not able to really do anything about it yet. Working a lot of different lines around the track, but no matter where he goes, Klein carrying momentum. He's flowing like liquor at a bachelor party. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mora, just in front of this, is really starting to apply the pressure on Phil Bull. As you say that, he's going to pull up alongside, then case out on a roller so it works the charge for a moment. But he's going to try to come on back here. Is they're going to take the left-hander here, land in the corner, and then drop down to the tree turn. Mora looks like he might try an outside. Now he's going to cut back in, go inside. And that Lines battle behind, behind these guys, too, is still fantastic between Mills and Klein. They are Bang so kinda. close together. Hanging on to the end of that as well. He's staying right in the mix as Mora pushes out of the way. Phil Bull pushed him right up over that berm to take the spot. Edward Mora up into the two spot as Jordan Foster all by himself out front. Spent the week practicing with the Prime Design guys and looks like it is uh, paying off for oh. him right here in Moto 2. Klein has a run on Mills and cross jumps him and gets that spot. So let's see if he can't set sail after Phil Bull quickly to maybe put a little distance between him and Mills, who he's struggled with so far in this moto. He's trying this outside line here, keeping wow. his momentum up. Wow, he's so quick in that corner. Mills is actually really good in that corner too, but Klein is actually going to get maybe to the inside on Phil Bull. Yeah, Bull is just like, wow. I'm not even going to deal with that. Bull just moves off to the side and says, there's no way. He's going to have to deal with Daniel Mills real quick though. Ooh, Mills thought he was going to jump on the back of Bull. Now he's trying an inside line. Going to cut back maybe to the outside, maybe follow Klein through that line. He gets a good run. And like you said, Mayhan is lurking back there, and I believe Devin Ryan is also not too far back either. He is not as he runs in that seven spot. I'm going to give you guys a quick update on Mitchell. He's running in 14th. Check his lap time, 2.22.1, so he did put a good lap down that time around, but still a long ways to go as we're getting closer to that halfway point of the moto. So now Klein up to third. We're going to continue to watch the championship battle, obviously, in this one as uh, Klein and Mitchell won two in the standings. Mitchell beat Klein in the first moto, went one, uh, won the first oh, moto. Klein. Oh, good save. He's going to get back on the track right in front of Phil Bull. That was... Bull has some momentum. Yeah, a little dangerous. And Mahan is right there on Bull. Man, Mahan, Mahan is absolutely flying. I'm telling you, he qualified well, so he's probably spent some more time, and he got better, I think, as that first moto went on. And, the, and I watched him towards the end of it. His corner speed was really good. Yeah, he certainly looks like he's... Oh, oh. And he's down. Commentator's curse. I was just about to say, Sean Klein moved up to third, and once again, he finds his teammate, Edward Mora, right in front of him. Just can't seem to yep. shake him. Battled him in the first moto, battled him early here in the second moto. We're almost at the halfway oh point. Oh my gosh, Mora got absolutely nasty on that scrub roller. I'm so disappointed I missed it. But these if he's anything like Sean Klein, he's probably doing it every lap. So we might be able to see it again next lap around as the ever good teammates run two and three and are about to dice it out. 
And it seems like this year the 250s have been a little bit more one line, kind of railing all the turns and stuff. Here at Southwick, they're running every different line on the track, whereas the 450s on the other tracks have been really versatile as far as line choice. I hope the 450s are like the 250s, where they're just running so many different lines around the track. A lot of it, I think, is this track, the way you bounce around through the rollers and stuff, you can't necessarily hit the same line every time. Right, you kind of have to flow where the track takes you. Just yeah, don't necessarily fight the bike to the line you want to go. You kind of let the bike go where it's going to go and use whatever line's in front of you. Exactly. Client carries a lot of speed around that where they connect onto the first turn area. He has kind of an outside to middle line, and it helps him all the way down the straightaways. It does allow him to close up on Edward Mora. Wow. Klein is shredding right now. Yeah, I think Klein really wants a piece of this championship, and the more points he can make up, the better. He lost uh, seven points in that first moto, so if he can turn that around somewhat equally, if not more, uh, that only helps his case going forward. Obviously, would like to also win his. Still. Also, would like to win the overall if he can. Wait, we have a new leader, Edward Mora. Where did we lose Jordan Foster? Oh, he has wow. dropped to the three spot you know, right I behind these guys. I saw someone off the side of the track just coming through the sweeper right before this. And I didn't think it was Foster, but it must have been. So he's still right in the mix, but now obviously not in the lead anymore. And Klein versus Mora continues, but now it's for the very top spot on the racetrack. Line carries a lot of speed, goes to the middle line around the tree turn. Mora tucks it tight, it works out about the same. But they get really close every time they do that because Klein's carrying so much speed around the outside. A lot of trust to Mora not to make a mistake and drop into the middle right in front of him. Mora gets sideways, oh. Klein gets sideways. Foster right there trying to pass those guys back. This is a really good three rider battle actually. I was on board with Klein, but Foster's making this thing interesting. Is not letting go of these two Evergood machine riders. We just are a couple minutes past the halfway point. I don't want to peel apart from this lead battle for the top 10 rundown brought to you by Race Tech. So I'll go ahead and read off the names while you watch this battle for the lead unfold. Edward Mora continues to lead the way with Sean Klein all over his back door he's got an opening watch this line right here that he has in this first turn section i think he's got the pass right here slingshot engaged around the outside makes the pass and he's got a better drive down the straightaway although Moore is trying to fight back but sean klein to the lead all right so 74 ever good rider they're both gonna go right around the down lapper Moore is gonna try to fight back through the inside here and he's gonna almost get him i thought he was gonna drive it in deeper there yeah, and then Klein's line drops right back in front of him, and then he pulls out a little bit because he carries so much speed, and Mora is down and off the bike. Jordan Foster uh. going to go into the two spot. Where is that going to allow Mora to get up? As we start this Race Tech Top 10 rundown, Sean Klein leads the way. Jordan Foster in the number two spot. Edward Mora drops into third. Ryan Mahan just made the move around Phil Bull on the Volcom 82 for the fourth spot. Bull runs fifth. Daniel Mills hanging tough up in the sixth spot. Jeremy Cohenauer runs in seventh. Another good moto going for the OG. Jeremy Cahooner. Brock Pearson, another good moto going here. He's had some good ones this year. MV Films running in the eighth spot. In ninth, we see Ben Seberg. I think this is the first time we've seen him today. Especially up here in the top ten on the 169 RFX KTM. Then we find Jordan Moxie, Architect, number 57, rounding out the top ten. Nice ride going for Dakota French. Decal works 717. Back in 12th, we finally find Prime Design Graphics, our points leader, Colton Mitchell. So he's looking to try to play salvage mode here, climb into the top 10, and maybe more, hopefully, to limit the damage. If you're not Sean Klein, if you're a Colton Mitchell fan, that's all you can hope for at this point. And we find a huge battle raging on Devin Ryan, Clinton Martin, and Jonathan Hughes. In the top 15, Hughes goes down, and that's our top 15 rundown brought to you by Race Tech. All right, I'm going to actually scoot back a little bit beyond that to find our versus find PC our versus one to watch. PC guy. Hopefully still out circling the track. We find him in the 29 spot in a battle with Harry White. Is Brett Powers, Mr. Donut MX, 
231 foul slap down the mechanics area straight he goes and over the roller Donut MX trying to get it done and maybe climb up and get some points but he's got a long ways to go to get that done still solid ride for Donut always putting on a good show for his fans and for us on the stream as well 13 seconds is the lead Foster chasing Mora down right now for that number two spot, though. Yeah, that's a close battle right now as well. Actually, this must have just changed hands because if you remember, Mora actually went down about, well, almost a lap ago now and coughed up that spot to Foster. So Foster must have also made a mistake oh. to give it back. Thought Mora was going to go down there on that flyaway. Wow, they just both railed that off camera turn. And mistake from Moore. Is that going to open the door for Foster? Oh, they're going to go side by side. Foster has an inside line, but I think Moore has the momentum. They split lines. Foster is still they showing him a together. wheel contact. Wow. I don't think you could have more contact than that in MX Simulator and stay on two wheels. Rubbing uh, elbows as they go over the table. Foster doing whatever he can to try to work back around Edward Mora. See what they do down here. They're going to both tuck into that inside. It was a pretty good battle, though, between two guys that are probably just happy to be here. But to be battling for that second spot is definitely a plus side for both of these guys. Obviously, they'd like it to be the lead, but Klein has now taken a good firm hold of that one. Oh, Foster, that was a really strange Weird. fall off. Yeah, for sure. Now the battle right behind them is on Mahan and D Mills. A couple OGs getting after it, trying to get after that number four spot. It's good to see a couple guys that we would probably classify as veterans in this series running up at the front. So many fresh faces. We saw in that first moto how many triple digit guys were up at the front. So this moto seems like almost an exact flip-flop. Obviously, Klein, the rookie this year, he's out there leading this thing. But to have oh, this battle... Mahan wow! Sketched out. I'm really surprised to see Mayhan doing this well on this track. You would expect to see it on one of the rounds that he built this year, as he is one of our RF track crew builders. But Mayhan doing it at Southwick, you would assume he had more laps on his own tracks, but just gelling here. Maybe gelling with the 250. Maybe it's the sand. I don't know. Yeah, trying inside line, just looking at different lines in, in general, trying to find a way around Mr. Daniel Mills. Man, Mills carried a lot of momentum through that sweeper, though, and actually stretched it out a little bit again. A quick update, Colton Mitchell's logged the fastest lap of the race with a 219. So he is going to the front as he just moved over into the number nine spot. But he's getting there. He's climbing through, salvaging points with a rapid pace. So we oh, are four Fosters on the ground. So Daniel Mills and Ryan May are going to go by him. Looking at 23 minutes into the moto now, Mitchell finally inside of the top 10. The real question is how well, far can he get? It's a freight train of guys yeah. in front of him pretty much all the way up into the third spot pretty much. So... I mean, he could still salvage a podium finish here in this moto. He could salvage a podium finish in this moto, but what he really could do is actually win the overall if he gets to Daniel Mills in third. Because Klein on a 4-1 right now is in yeah. the position to win the overall. But a 1-3 out of Mitchell would do it for him. And like you said, it's all a freight train as Kohenauer goes down and Mitchell is going to get by him as well. Yeah, late in this photo, but a lot of time left, and Mitchell is running some steaming lap times. Of course, we mentioned that 219 last time, a 221, which is still pretty much faster than anyone on the tracks running. Sean Klein, our leader, only has a 221.5. And yeah, everyone else above 221 fast laps. In fact, most of them, everyone except Klein, is a 223 fast lap or above. That is in front of Colton Mitchell right now. So Mitchell has the pace to potentially podium, win the overall, and gain points even after this terrible start which we've seen from him a lot early in the season where he was getting those bad starts he was salvaging it until he started to capitalize on the mistakes from side off to take the points lead 
Now Mitchell working hard on Phil Bowl. Who has a great ride going here in fifth. Mitchell all the way up to sixth. Pressure from Brock Pearson who could mix things up. He's Man. been a controversial guy as of late. Oh, was that Mayhem? That was yeah. Mayhem. And Mitchell also got the Tied. pass done on Phil Bull. Yeah, so up into fourth. And he Tied is for the overall right now. seven seconds Dan behind D-Mills. But, yeah, they, that's probably the bigger point out of all this. Who, who really cares who wins the overall? I guess these guys for bragging rights. But Mitchell has now made it so that it's a moot point. I mean, the gap that he came in, in into this race over Sean Klein is the gap that he would leave with if it stays like this. So, Don't count out the 57 of Jordan Moxie. He's been showing and qualifying. He has the speed to run up front, and he is right behind Mitchell. He could potentially push him, maybe make him make a mistake, maybe take that spot back over, and at least help Sean Klein game some points as he puts Donut MXR versus PC.com. One to watch, a lap down, Sean Klein. Out with a 26 second lead. Yeah, I Tremora think this is... running in second. Feels like he's shredding right now. And he's just losing time to his teammate. I'll tell you who feels like he's losing time is Daniel Mills because this battle of Colton Mitchell and Jordan Moxie and hell, everybody back to about 15th is coming. Yeah, it's just a freight train of rider after rider. Give a call to Jonathan Hughes. He's made his way up into the 12th spot after one of those horrendous starts we talked about. Most of the guys that were up front in moto number two were just buried in moto, or that were up front in moto number one, buried in moto number two, coming back well. Also, Dakota French, good moto going for him. As I say that, he slides himself out up in, he was in the 13th spot. So nice job for him. Might want to watch this battle for fourth, though, as Colton Mitchell is seriously under attack from Jordan Moxie. And honestly, Moxie looks like he's the aggressor here. He's pushing Mitchell up into Daniel Mills, but he might have a go at him before long. I think the mindset has changed at all for Mitchell now that he's towards the front of the field. Maybe going into a little more defensive mode. And before, I'm sure he was just panicked, like, I got to get to the front, got to get to the front. Oh, oh Moxie, Moxie with the mistake. I think that lapper maybe distracted him a yeah. little bit. Yeah, uh, that was uh, Marcondas Vitosa. Obviously, no intention on Vitosa's part to get yeah. in the way, but now here comes Pearson on Moxie. Oh, this is not gonna work out. Woo! Two lines into one doesn't usually go very well. Ah, uh, Moxie, big mistake. Yeah, there goes Pearson right on through. So now Mitchell, who looked like he was going to maybe lose that fourth spot, is right on the position now, Daniel Mills, for third to win the overall here at Southwick. And lap times tell the story here. 225 fast lap for Mills, 219 for Mitchell, and Mitchell another 221 last time around. I think it's only a matter of time unless there's a mistake from Mitchell. Boy, I would have loved to see what Moxie's lap time was if he had stayed on two wheels because he was really catching oh, Mitchell. Oh, Mitchell contact. Aggressive. Wow. And Mills somehow kept it on two wheels. I thought for sure with the amount of contact that it would just be one and done. And what that does is a mistake from Mitchell and it allows Mills to climb right back on him. And with that aggressive move, does he leave the door open and Mills come plowing through it? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if Mills is quite that level of aggressive. But obviously, he wants to have a good moto here, and so far, it's working out. Yeah, I mean, at the same point, he just got the door hinges blown off by Colton Mitchell. All right, we are almost to that 30-minute mark, and it looks like just when you thought Sean Klein was going to gain points on Colton Mitchell in this one, Mitchell just decided... Yeah, I'll go from about 12th to 3rd in and the matter of about right yeah, now. in the matter of about 5 minutes it took him to get there. And here comes Edward Mora into his clutches. Yeah, I mean, he's running him down at a rapid pace even with that mistake and slide out from Mitchell. Wow, Mora just got dirty again on that scrub jump. But I want to see what this lap time's going to be from Mitchell even with that mistake. He is absolutely railing the Southwick sand. Let's actually go on board with him here as he tries to make that pass. Does Mora help his teammate out by trying to put an aggressive move up on Mitchell? 
I don't know. Maybe. Maybe the teammate play finally comes in here, but Mora hasn't really been the friendliest of teammates this this round yet, so I think he's probably just trying to fend for himself here. But how much fending can he do? I mean, Mitchell is coming. Look at Mora throwing sauce again. 221 once again from Colton Mitchell. The 221s consistently, even with other riders around him. Oh, Mitchell has a line on him. Lapped rider down in the middle of the track. Ooh. Mitchell's going to make his way through. Throws a wheel, loses his drive. Yeah, but gained it all right back by cutting so tight in the corner. Tries an outside line coming in. We'll continue to the outside. So actually lost a little bit of time on Mora. Fantastic onboard action here. The battle for second. Round seven of the Ride365.com Nationals at Southwick. And time has expired. Two lap board going to come around this time around for our leader who's 26 seconds out front. The battle for second is on as Mitchell looking to capture the overall but seeing if he can gain a couple oh. more points. And there's Mora on the ground. And right behind him, he's going to lose a lot of spots potentially as here comes Moxie, Mills, and Pearson as he gets back going. Yeah, he's going to lose the spot to Moxie and Mills for sure. Pearson is trying to jump over him, and he's bringing a lapped rider with him there. Oh, Mills almost got into the side of Mora, so they switch spots again, and Pearson goes down the inside of Mills. So Mills must have had a bobble. Bummer, Jordan Foster, early leader, is out of the moto. Ah. Uh. For all those wondering about our versus PC.com, one to watch Brett Powers. He's up to the 25th spot and trying to charge forward. Uh, Mills just went down. So he's lost touch now with Pearson, who's really trying to go after Mora here. And Moxie. The I'm Mora scrub. I think. Wasn't Moxie third in the first moto as well? I will double check that here real quick. think that would be the podium if that's the case first moto was Mitchell Rose Moxie Klein yeah so Mitchell looking at one two finishes for the win Klein going to go four one for second and potentially Jordan Moxie who just saved a huge almost crash right there gonna go three three for third I don't know how he brought that whip back but meanwhile this third place is definitely not locked down by any stretch of the imagination as he has got Mora and Pearson hauling the mail and catching him quickly. Oh, Pearson yeah. almost goes down, though. Mora and Pearson were seventh and ninth, respectively, in moto number one. But they're not really a factor for the podium overall, so Moxie probably got that thing locked in. Two-lap board is out, like you mentioned, though. So coming down about a lap and a half to go for your leader. 20 second lead, Sean Klein needs to just keep it together. And I mean, his comeback to fourth, he's going to lose a little bit of points on the day, which he needs to be making points, but could have been oh so much worse for him. And same thing for Mitchell, who was buried in the pack here. Could have been oh so much worse, charging all the way back to potentially a second. Pearson and Mora going at it. Yeah, Pearson just got around Mora, who just made a small mistake. So, again, they're going to continue their fight. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> Both oh, of them throwing down. Lines come together and clips the back end of Pearson, I think, and slid him out. Now here comes Daniel Mills sneaking through. So just when Pearson feels like he's finally... Oh, wow. Back around Mills. Seems like Pearson is working his way past some of these guys and then crashing his way behind them. That was an interesting Mills. line from Mills right there. All right, coming to the white flag for your leader, Sean Klein. And he has still got a nice, sizable lead over Mitchell to work with here. So I think he's got this one in hand. White flag is now waving. Closest battle is still looking like it's Mills versus Pearson, perhaps. Mm -hmm. 
definitely settled down between those two. Nothing really crazy going on. How about Ben Seberg? He's kind of stayed inside of the top 10 around it most of this moto, and he still is inside of the top 10. Cohen Hour, Phil Bull, Jonathan Hughes, Ryan Mahan, Dakota French, Clint Martin, Devin Ryan, Logan Leitzel, Josh Betts, Tyler Fry, Schuler, Eklund, Donovan, St. Laurent, AJ Green, Jack Zarson. One final check on our versus PC one to watch. Brett Powers, as he comes around, he is running in the 24 spot. So not quite in points in this moto, but definitely a much better moto than the first one. And to get to points, he would have a long ways to go. So I don't think it's going to happen this time around, but still a solid moto out of Mr. Donut MX. Ooh, Pearson all over the back wheel of Daniel Mills for that fifth spot. There's a battle on the track. And these two just continue to find each other late in this race. Tremendous battle. Like you said, oh, oh they both get together. How did Mills How stay does... on two wheels? I don't know, but here comes Ben Seberg to try to capitalize on the mistake from Pearson. That's going to throw them into a battle. Meanwhile, up front, Sean Klein is a few corners away from doing just about everything he could do this week to take as many points away from Colton Mitchell as he can. I think that this really proves that Mitchell's on a roll that's going to be really hard for the rest of them to beat. Nonetheless, still a good ride out of Klein to work his way through the front of the field early on, get into the lead, and check out early as the 74 of Sean Klein wins. Southwick Moto 2 with a nice little whipper tail. He'll be disappointed as Colton Mitchell did put on a tremendous ride though to come through the field. He was going to pick up second and actually take the overall. So your Southwick winner, Colton Mitchell, 1 2 on the day. With a 218.7 last lap time. Here comes Jordan Moxie, third overall on the day. 3 3 in the motos. Arch Tech Rider number 57, Jordan Moxie. Pearson and Seberg still potentially going at it as they come flying into the corner down here. Seberg is just going to hang on here. Mills crosses in fifth, so a great ride out of the OG. Seberg in sixth. Pearson seventh. Another solid ride out of Jeremy Cohen. Are just steady Eddie. That's a tickle ride right there. Not really much to get noticed. But right there in that 7-8 range, Jeremy Kohenauer, great moto. Phil Bull, nice moto here on the number 82 for Team Volcom. He's going to be dropping that number. We say it week in and week out. Great performance from him. Nice come from behind into the top 10 for Jonathan Hughes on the 134. Ryan Mahan, solid day. I believe he went 12-11 on the day. Was a split fire rider and ran up front. Good bit of that second moto. Nice job from Ryan. Nice turn down there. Dakota French, probably his best moto in the pro ranks of the season here in the 12 spot on the 717 decal works machine. Clinton Martin across the line in 13th. Devin Ryan, relax a tire. Has a 14th place ride going as he's on the ground, but I think he'll be plenty safe to get up and going. As Josh Betts on the Evergood 96 comes around in 15th with some Bit of a gap over Tyler Fry. Logan Leitzel running in the 17 spot. TMFactory-Racing.com, number 201. And he's hauling the mail trying to get to Tyler Fry right now. Yeah, he was definitely sending her. Couldn't quite make it happen, though. And that is going to be the last guy to finish, I believe. He's definitely the last runner on the lead yeah. lap. Last guy on the lead lap as he absolutely Damn. tried to shred the last turn. <laughs> somehow we'll get across the finish line eventually here. He's going to go up sideways and go on across. He probably doesn't want to sit there. Austin Eklund, James Schuler, and William St. Laurent will round out the riders getting points. Trying Just outside the out. point, Sally Slomo is going to be bummed with the 21st place finish. AJ Green, Jack Zars, Mikhail Ming Woodley. 
Donut MXR versus PC.com. One to watch comes across in 25th. Marcando Sfaitosa. 26th. Craig Leak, Jordan Foster, and the rest. Rage quits and cuts her in. Yeah, and cuts don't change a thing. So Klein wins Moto 2. Mitchell wins the overall. 250s in the book from Southwick. We're going to take a quick break here on the live stream. Thanks for watching the 250 broadcast, though, for anybody watching the playback on YouTube. Uh, be sure to check out the broadcast of the 450 actually coming up just in a moment here live, and you can also click a different link in the description below to click over to that. But 250s in the books from Southwick. Don't touch that URL bar. Coming right back with more Ride365.com Nationals powered by Versus PC.